Hi, I'm sure many of you out there use Canva. It's a great tool for mock-ups or for templates or for posters, lots of stuff. Anyway, I was playing with it and I came across this design and I thought this would be a really interesting design to try and emulate in the Gutenberg block editor, not using any plugins whatsoever. It's a really, I think it's quite a cute little design, it's, but it's got some really interesting features that will really help your learning when you're um, learning the editor. It's got things like these lovely curves on these these columns here. It's also got this nice background color behind and this sort of subtle thing here. And it's got these nice icons here. And we can pretty much achieve all of that without any plugins. This is actually what I built. This is what I'm gonna show you how to build. Uh, but you're gonna have some really good learning in this and specifically around group blocks and column blocks because they really power a lot of the layouts that we can do with Gutenberg. So here we go, this is how you can do it. Before I jump into step by step on how to recreate this, I just want to give you the helicopter view on uh, on the structure because that, I think that's really important to understand. And I'm using a really cool plugin actually called Editor Block Outline to show the structure. And you can use this when you're building your um, Gutenberg pages. And I'll put a link to the plugin. It's a free plugin in the description for you. But this is what it does. It basically lets you see, you know, all your blocks and it's got some cool settings here so you can increase the um so it's not changing the output it's just changing how you edit stuff so if you want to you know this this can help you understand how your gutenberg pages are built so it's a really uh, cool little plugin that you can have on to show hover or always anyway let's get back to the um the structure of this so you, you can see here and i'm going to turn on list view as well so we can also see list view let's just turn this off so we, this is the structure of our basically this thing here uh, and what we've got at the top level we've got this core column block so that that basically is like the outer container this contains everything so we started and I'll talk you through this in a minute by just adding one column block then within that uh, you'll see here we've got a spacer that's not so interesting and then we've got a paragraph but the interesting stuff comes down here these three columns which are these these three shapes are actually columns and can you see here we've got a core column block but then in here we've got this group we've grouped the block and what that means is we can group this icon this heading and this paragraph into essentially one group why why we need to do that is so that we can actually put this background behind it if you don't group them then you can't you can only put a background behind the entire column and then we can't do cute things like this nice radius to it so that's why we do that and you'll see we've just got three columns with that in as well. And then down here, we've just got the button block and a spacer block to finish off. So that's kind of how it's constructed. It's basically blocks within blocks. So we're nesting blocks. You can see the hierarchy on the left, but it's kind of, ooh, it's a bit difficult to see from there. Let me take you step by step through how to do this. There's a little bit of CSS as well, just to get these nice little um, rounded tops on the top of our columns and a little bit of padding. But I will put, give you all the CSS as well so you don't have to do any coding if you want to recreate this. Right, let me show you how, it, how, how to do it. Right, let's do it. So we're gonna start by adding <coughs> the main container columns block. Let's, I'm gonna flick back and forth between these. So basically that whole section there with that sort of light beigey color, that's our first column. So I'm gonna add the column block here. Now I'm, I'm continuing to use so I'm just hitting forward slash and then columns. You can also click the plus sign here and do it that way. So there's two ways to do it. I'm just doing it the quicker way. And I'm gonna choose one column because this is basically my, almost like my page, my container block. And I'm still using the um, block editor outline just so we can see what's going on clearly as I'm building stuff. Hopefully that will be helpful to you. And then within this, we've let me flip back. We've basically got some text We've got a head, um, let's put a heading actually. So I'm gonna search for heading. Um, okay, and I'm gonna center that by just aligning it up here. Um, now what else have we got here? Let's flip back and then we've just got a little paragraph underneath. So you can just hit return and type your paragraph. I'm gonna grab some dummy text from my little lorem epsom generating thingy that I've got on Chrome. Okay, there's my text, and again, I just center that. So that's easy stuff so far. Now we get to the more interesting stuff. But what I'm actually gonna do to start with, I'm gonna add a background to uh, the, 
the container just so we can see kind of we've got the container and we're building stuff now there's two ways to do this but you need to make sure you select the, the proper level you can click on the list view here and hit columns and then we can change the color over here like so or you can use your breadcrumbs down here and kind of traverse back up the hierarchy so I find a really quick way to actually work with columns if you're ever trying to edit the top level columns is just to click anywhere within it look at your breadcrumbs down here and then just traverse up to the top level block select it and then you can change the color now we want this sort of beigey color so I'm going to use a um, a great chrome add-on called colorzilla which basically lets me pick any color from any web page and it will just copy to your clipboard I will put a link to it um, in the dis in the description for you so you can use it if you want to and let me just change the background color here it's just a free chrome add-on so there's my kind of background color that I've got working next it's time to add these three columns okay so I'm gonna put my cursor at the end there and just hit return and then I'm gonna hit forward slash columns now again you could do this using the plus sign up here and just pulling them in drag and dropping Sometimes when you're working in columns, just hitting return or forward slash is the better way to do it. So now I've set my grid and can you see it's telling me, it's quite cool this block outline plugin actually, it's, it makes life quite easy when you're working in complex things like these layouts here. And then within here, basically I've got a social icon, I've got a heading and I've got some text. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on one column first and then once I'm happy with it, duplicate it across. So I'm gonna start by adding the social icons so I'm going to click on the plus to add a block, search for social icons, and it's this one here. And this lets you add different social icons anywhere on your site, so it's a pretty cool little block. And you click on the plus sign and then you add your icon. So I'm going to search for Twitter. And you have to click on it again and then put the address in. Now I'm just putting a hash in, you would actually put the address of your Twitter account in. Now the other thing I need to do here is to make sure I align it center. Now it won't, in my experience of using this, I think I'm using Astro on this site, it won't preview here align center, but when we publish it, it'll be, it'll be all good. Then we've got this heading block here. So underneath that, I'm gonna add the heading block. And I can't remember what I said, follow my tweets or something, follow my tweets. Okay, and then under that, I just had a paragraph block. Let's use my lorem ipsum gen generator again just to get some stuff in. Okay, and that's, let's just, I'm gonna publish as I go here just so we can, so I can show you where I'm at with this. Okay, there we go. So you see how it's kind of looking okay. I just need to align these two fellas here. But the next bit I need to do is I need to add a background and that get that nice rounded sort of arch effect that we've got here and this is how you do that so we go back to edit page and this is where the group block is so essential for us so uh, what I'll do actually to start with I'll just align these so I want to align them center because I want to try and get this one right before I duplicate it and use it in the other columns so what we need to do is select each of these by holding holding down shift and then clicking and that just selects them all. And then this is the key bit, this little icon here. I'm gonna convert this to a group block. And that now is a group block. And you can see here, it tells me with this cool little plugin that I now have this group block. Also down here, we can see the hierarchy as well. Okay, so if I click in here, I can traverse up and that is the group block. Okay, now there is a little bit of CSS that I've used uh, to do those rounded corners. But first, and I'm going to show you what that is. First, I just need to grab this color here. I might use a less subtle, subtle color to start with, just so we can see it. So making sure we've got the group block selected. So if you're down at the paragraph level, you don't want to change the color. We have to be at the group level. So again, click, that, click into it and then traverse up to the top level we need, which is the group block. You can also use these three lines here just to make sure you're actually there. And now in the color section, in fact, let me just choose a, a really vigorous color. <laughs> okay, and that's gonna put a color, a background color behind that, that group, okay? But the next thing we need to do is we need to, to add a little bit of CSS, which I'm gonna show you now, and I'll put a link to in the description as well, just to create that nice sort of arch effect. So what we need to do, and I'll show you the CSS quickly first, 
and then I'll show you what we need to do to get this to work. So you'll see in additional CSS, I've just created uh, this bit of CSS here, which is, that's the class. And I'll show you where you put the class to make this work. And this is, this is basically rounding off the top um, for us. And then I put a little bit of padding in it. Okay, so that's my CSS. And you can, you're free to use exactly these, you know, if you don't wanna come up with your own CSS, just use mine. So to actually apply that, what I need to do is go back here, select the group block. And again, we can click in here, traverse back up the hierarchy, go to advance. And this, can you see over here on the right, this is where I put that class. That basically gives this section like a name and then that CSS applies style to that name. Let me just check, double check that that's worked. So we've applied that class to that group block. And now we should see that cool little archway, isn't that? Isn't that isn't that cool? It's all working nicely. Um, actually, the color's not too off offensive, so I'm gonna keep the color just so it's crystal clear on what we're doing. So once you've got your first column correct, what, we, what we're gonna do now is essentially just replicate that column. So not the group, the actual column itself. So again, click into the group and go to the column block because the column block contains the group and that's the one we want to duplicate essentially. It can get confusing, but it, with a bit of practice, Honestly, it's very, very powerful. And now I've just duplicated that column, okay? And I'm gonna click into these other columns and delete those two. You can just literally click in them, hit um, backspace and it will delete them. And now you've got three columns and because I duplicated them, they're all using that CSS class. So they'll, they'll all be formatted perfectly for me. And what I, what I would do, I'm not gonna do it today, but I would just go in each of these and basically edit the text and edit the social icons. So we've pretty much got the layout. And then the final thing I did on this page, which is quite a new feature with the buttons blocks. So I do want to show you this quickly. If it should ever load, here we go. Come on, come on, come on. So at the bottom here, I'm just going to add that button. Uh, but there's a nice new feature, newish feature with the buttons block, this one here, that, um, Let's just put in get, get in touch. But over here on the right, you can actually set the width settings. Can you see that? So you can actually set that to be a proportion of the container that it sits within. Okay, so I've set that to be 100%, which is kind of mimicking, you know, that Canva design that I showed you, this one here at the start, where this button goes all the way along the bottom. So there we go. That's how you can recreate that fairly um, complex, but nice, elegant layout. You're just using just using core Gutenberg blocks and knowledge of the group block and the columns block. They're really powerful in combination. So I hope you found that useful. If you did um, and you want to see more tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, if you can give it a thumbs up, that'd be fab because it just really helps share the word about what I'm up to. So thanks very much and I'll see you soon.